Hi everyone, welcome to new video from Not Real Engineering. And in this video, we are going to see how to run an example with software FEPX. Few months back, I uploaded this video where we briefly talked about the introduction of this software FEPX, what it can do, and also how to install it. After that, I was going to make this video about how to run an example, but I got to know that a new version of FEPX is going to be released soon. So I thought let's wait until a new version is released and then make this video. Because sometimes when version is changed, few things will get changed here and there. And then the video with previous version might not be that useful. But now the new version of FEPX is released in last week. So I'm recording this video. That's why the delay. Anyway, let's get started. This is the problem statement. We are going to create a cubicle RVE with 50 grains of copper and copper means FCC structure. Then we will apply a uniaxial tensile loading with 2% strain and finally obtain the spatial distribution of stress strain and also we will get a stress strain graph. Now overall any problem which you will solve with FEPX can be divided into 5 steps. In step 1 we will create a microstructure and to create a microstructure we have to use module T of Napier software and this is how that microstructure is going to look. Then in step 2 we will mesh this microstructure and it will look something like this. For this we will use Napier's module M and to use Napier's module M you have to install Gmesh software as well. Then in step 3 we will apply material properties, boundary condition and actually solve the problem using finite element crystal plasticity. And this is what FEPX software does. So out of these 5 steps we will use FEPX software only for step 3. In this problem we are going to use this boundary condition which is shown over here. So the bottom surface will be fixed and the top surface will be fixed in x and y direction but we will apply some displacement in z direction. Once we simulate using FEPX it will create bunch of output files which we can't visualize directly for that we have to perform step 4 in which we will use Napier module S and this will post process the output files of FEPX and convert into a format which can be visualized. And finally in step 5 we will take the output files created in step 4 and we will visualize them using Napier's module V. And this will look something like this. Before we begin to perform these simulations you have to install total 3 softwares. Only one FEPX software will not do. So first you have to install Gmesh, then you have to install Napier and finally you have to install FEPX. I have made separate videos about how to install each of these softwares as shown over here. I will put the link of these videos in the description box below. And another point to note is if you have installed this Napier or FEPX in past, you have to update it to the new version. So to run the example shown in this video, you must use new version of Napier which is 4.2.0 and new version of FEPX which is 1.2.0. And to update to newer version, you can just follow these steps. This is for FEPX and this is for Napier. It doesn't matter, you can install anyone first. For example, to download FEPX source code, you just have to go to FEPX website which is this and then go in this download and download source code from here. Once you download this zip file, extract it, then you just have to type these commands in a terminal and it will be installed. Similarly for Napier, this is Napier's website. Here again you can go to downloads and download Napier's 4.2.0 version. And apart from this, if you want to plot a stress strain curve, you have to install this one more software which is called GNU plot. This is not necessary if you just want spatial distributions of stress and strain or it's not necessary to perform simulations using FEPX. But if you want to plot a stress strain curve, you have to install this software as well. And before installing this GNU plot, you have to install this dependency as well. So first go to your Ubuntu terminal, type this command. If it gives you error, then type these two commands first and then again type this command. And when this is installed, then follow the steps to install GNU plot. This is a very straightforward installation, so I will not show it over here. But you can just visit this website, download the latest source code and then follow these commands. Again, this everything is totally optional. When we go through example, I will let you know when you will need this. But this is just for a last step. So if you don't want to perform that last step, it's okay. You don't have to go through this hassle. 
Now let's begin with our example. First open your Ubuntu app or if you are using directly Linux then you can open your Linux terminal. If it is Ubuntu app you have to mount the C drive first. And then I created this FEPX example folder in my C drive. So I will go into that folder. Now whatever we do all the files will be generated in this folder. Just to make sure if your neighbor and FEPX is updated to new version. Here you can just type neighbor and it should show you version 4.2.0 and similarly you can type FEPX and it should show you version 1.2.0. Once you check that then let's begin. First thing is to create this microstructure using neighbor module T. For that you have to type this command. Now in this file I have compiled all the commands which you have to enter in the terminal to run this example. You can download this file from this channel's github profile. I will put the link in the description box below. These are the two commands we already entered and now we are at step 1. So let's just copy paste this. Don't copy paste this dollar symbol into your Ubuntu app over here. And now we are using Napers module T to perform the tessellations to create microstructure. As you can see in this command it is neighbor module t. This slash n is how many number of grains. So we are having 50 grains and the name of output file will be simulation. If you want to understand these commands in more detail you can watch my other videos which are specifically about neighbor. Five minutes later. Done. Tessellations are done. Now if you go back to that folder you can see one file simulation.test. But to visualize this polycrystal you have to type this command which is neighbor module v. Again go back to the Ubuntu terminal and type this command. This will create a file image underscore polycrystal. And if you open this, this is the polycrystal we just generated. So looks good. Let's go to step 2 which is creating a mesh. For this type this command. It invokes neighbor's m module and it will use simulation.test file as input. Again go back to Ubuntu terminal and copy paste that command. Meshing usually takes a lot of time. Much, much later. Meshing is done. When meshing is done, you will find one more file over here. Simulation.msh, which is the mesh file. And again, to visualize the meshing, you have to type this command. And you can see the mesh over here. Fine, so now we did step 1 and step 2. Now let's go to step 3. For step 3 we have to apply material properties boundary condition and finally simulate. And to do this you will need something called simulation.config file. This config file you can find in the FEPX folder. I will show you where it is. If you go to FEPX folder which is FEPX.1.2.0 you will find one folder named example. Go in this example and go in example 1. Over here there will be 6 files. Out of this we want this simulation.config file. So copy paste this file to your current folder over here. So now we have simulation.config file. To run the simulation we need only two files. One will be simulation.config and another will be simulation.msh. Now let me open this config file. This is how a typical configuration file looks like for FEPX. First you will have material parameters. In this you can define how many number of phases you have. In our example we have only one phase copper. All the grains are of copper. So it is one. Then this is the description of phase one. In this you can see crystal type is FCC. And these are the crystal plasticity material parameters. I am not going into detail of crystal plasticity constitutive equation. I have separate videos dedicated to crystal plasticity. You can watch those videos. And also you can find the details about these material parameters. In FEPX manual. This is the FEPX reference manual and it is extremely well written so you can find all the commands over here. And then these are elastic constants. For FCC we have to define three elastic constants. The next section is deformation history. In this we will define what type of load we are applying. So this is uniaxial strain. How many number of steps you want. In this case we have two steps. First step applies 1% of strain in increments of 4 and second step applies another 1% with increments of 2. 
So at the end, we will get six increments. These are the number of increments. Then boundary condition. In this, we have boundary condition called uniaxial grip. Uniaxial grip is nothing but the boundary condition I showed over here. So this is applied in Z direction. If you want to apply X, you can just change it over here to X. And the loading phase is Z max. That is the top surface. And then strain rate. Here we are applying 0.01. And finally, which results you want. Here we have four results. This is nodal coordinates. This is elastic strain tensor, stresses and force. There are many other options. You can check the reference manual to find out what other options you have. So this is just a brief overview of how simulation.config file looks. So let's go back to Ubuntu terminal. And now here to run the simulation, you just have to type FEPX. It will automatically look for mesh file and also configuration file and it will start the simulation. It will take some time because we are running it on a single core. If you want to run in parallel, you can do that as well, but I'm not going to do that in this video. That we will talk in future videos. A lot of boring math later. Okay, simulation is done. Simulation completed successfully. It always feels good to read something like this. Anyway, after simulation is done, you will find bunch of files in your folder. These are the outputs you requested. So for example, if you open this file, post.force.z0 then it will have a reaction force on z0 surface at the end of every increment you can see we had two steps this is the step one and in step one we had four increments so these are the increments and then we had step two which had two increments this is corresponding step time but these files cannot be directly visualized to visualize them you have to do step four first for step four, you just have to copy paste this command over here. And this will write another directory, fepx underscore example dot sim. So this folder will be created in your C drive. So if you just go back over here, this is the separate folder created in your C drive, which will have all the results element wise and node wise. Again, you can go back to your previous folder, which is fepx underscore example. And now we can visualize those results. For that, we'll go to step five. This is step five. For step five, we are going to use neighbors module V. Now this is the address of that new folder which just got created because of step four. So just copy paste this command. I know this is a very big command, but just copy paste it over here. And it will create two PNG files. This is a stress in three, three direction. And also it will create a legend separately. This is the legend. Similarly, this next command. Again, you can copy paste it over here. And it will create a strain in 3.3 direction. And this is the legend. Now the last step, getting a stress strength curve. For this last step, you will need this GNU plot. So if you want to get a stress strain curve, you have to perform this first. And again, before you do this last step, you have to copy this plot stress strain dot GP file again from that example folder. Remember, I showed you this example folder one underscore uniaxial. In this, we copied this simulation dot config file last time. Now we have to copy this plot underscore stress underscore strain dot GP file. So just copy paste this again back into our this folder. Now this file is there. This file just has some commands for GNU plot. If you open this file, you will see this. I will not go into details of this. This is everything about GNU plot. Then you have to copy paste this command in our Ubuntu terminal. And when you do this, a stress strain graph will be created. This is again a PNG image. Similarly, you can run remaining four examples as well. There is actually another simple way to run them. All the examples in FEPX are arranged in this way. In all the example folders, you will find one generate underscore mesh dot sh file. For example, if we go to our first example, which we just ran, you will find here generate underscore mesh dot sh file. If you open this file, all the commands to create the tessellation and create the mesh are already there. And you can see this will create these two files. So you can just go into this folder and run this file, it will create tessellation and mesh file. And this file you can run directly as well through Linux terminal. 
you don't even have to open and copy paste commands. You can just directly submit this file. But you don't even have to do this because simulation.tessellation file and simulation.mesh file are already there in that folder. Then for step three, we need configuration file and mesh file, which are already there again. So configuration file is also there in that folder. And finally, for post process, there will be one post process.sh file. Again, if you open this post process file, all the commands which I just showed are already here. First, we are converting that using Nepper module S and then visualizing it. And it will show you which files it will create again. So this I feel is a very well written example and all examples are like that. So if you go to example three, again, you will find same files over here. So you can just go into this folder using your Ubuntu terminal and directly run FEPX over here. It will run. There will be one more file called run example. If you open this file, you can find out how to run FEPX in parallel. Now, let me just show you how to run this third example. So go to that folder. And then here you can just type FEPX and everything is there. So you can just go to any example folder and directly type FEPX. Eventually. And simulation is completed successfully. And then for post processing, just submit dot slash post underscore process dot sh file and it will do everything and all the results will be generated in form of png file over here so in short very easy to run these examples which come with fepx you just need two commands nothing else first fepx then second dot slash post underscore process dot sh and to know the details about these examples you can refer FEPX manual. If you go in FEPX manual, you can see example simulations, page number 39. All the examples are explained over here. Just go through it and you will know how to solve them. We just solved this third example. So we just got these results. So you can read over here to understand what that example does and you can change them according to your needs. Anyway, that's it for this video. If you have any questions, please let me know in the comment section below. And let me know if I should create more tutorials about FEPX. Maybe we can run other examples, go through details about what each example does, go in details about simulation.config files for each example. And maybe we can dig more into simulation.config file as well and try to understand different keywords used in those files. If you like this video, please show your support by subscribing to this channel, which will give me motivation to create more educational videos like these. You can also go to channels playlist tab and here you can see all the videos with similar topics combined together. For example, let's say if you're interested in ANSYS tutorials, you can go to this ANSYS tutorial playlist and see all the videos from this playlist. All the codes and files which I use for these videos are also available for you to directly download from this channel's GitHub profile. The link of this profile is given in the description box below. If you have any questions, please let me know in the comment section below. And as always, thank you for watching.